Hey everybody and welcome to my Minecraft 1.7 review. So in this update I think the bigger thing is uh, pistons. As you can see I have some stuff already built so I can show you what to do with pistons. But before we do this let's see how to build one. So first thing for a normal piston uh, just three wooden planks at the top. Uh, two stones on each side one iron in the middle and one redstone dust at the bottom gives you a piston. Um, if you want to make a sticky piston you need to create a piston and add a slime ball on top. There we go. Sticky piston. So what's the difference? Um, the left one here is a sticky piston, the right one is a normal piston. So if you activate them they will push blocks. All right, Both push them but the difference is the sticky piston will actually pull it back again while the other one will just leave it where it is. So that's the difference. You can also do that with um, upwards directions and also with gravity affected blocks like sand or gravel. Uh, again this is the sticky one, this is the normal one. So as you can see they both pull them up um, or push them up but if you lower them you see the sticky one will actually drag it down while the normal piston will uh, just, you know, let it fall down. Um, they don't really affect you in a different way so you don't get stuck on a sticky one or whatever. But um, both can push you around in any direction. Uh, if you place a piston, it will always look at you. So that defines um, where it will, you know, target to or where it will go to if you activate it. So keep that in mind. So let's see what else I build. What else you can do with pistons. Um, many of you probably saw already the video by Jap. Um, they had this hidden secret door so there we go. That's a simple version of what they had. But uh, I think it's, it's enough for a door. Um, so another thing is big gap we need a bridge, otherwise we would burn. So let's just activate our bridge. There we go. So this one is a more expensive bridge because it uses sticky pistons. But I think it also looks nice. You can just, you know, push glass or something else and you can still look down. And this one is with normal pistons. You can just walk around them without falling down even in, on, you know, on this side. So if you don't have a lot of slime balls, you can use this. Uh, the next thing I actually saw on YouTube, it was pretty nice. Um, it's not My version is not that great, I tried to make a better one, but I think for now it's enough. So, let's guess you have a room and it would be night, you know. Uh, would be pretty dark. So, there's a button, click it and... Oh. There we go. You have light! Hey hey! It's a light button. Light switch. And off again. And on again. So yeah. Pretty simple in this uh, case. Let me show you real quick. Walk around here. So you can see just a redstone wire going up to two pistons. Normal ones. So this one gets triggered a little bit later. Um, just so you can reset it again and they will just push the normal block and the glowstone from left to right depending on uh, how often you clicked. Alright, so this is how you can make a lamp. Next one is actually pretty useful I think. Uh, this is a automated wheat farm. So you have like, you know, three lines of weeds for example. I have water streams below this stone here. Um, so you can, you don't have to see it or whatever. And we have three pistons over here with three water source blocks behind them. So as you can see, pistons can block off water, whether from, you know, if they come from below or top or left or right, it doesn't really matter as long as they block it. And you can even walk over it. So once I push this button or this, or pull this lever, it will lower every piston and water will come down uh, each of these rows and uh, 
basically push all weeds and uh, seeds towards you. This only works if water does not directly fall onto seeds. If we had something here, water would fall down here and you know it wouldn't drop anything. It only works if they get touched by water from the side. So, lover, water's coming, and there are our goodies. You could just you know make the walls a bit higher so they won't won't uh, lie down on this uh, on this wall. And yeah, to reset it, you know, just pull the lever again. Water will drain, and you can place your seats that easy. Next one is um, basically the same but with reeds. So we have reeds on this side, one water stream on this side that will just you know bring bring us the reed towards us, and we have a lot of pistons behind the reeds. So we are not we are we are putting them at the second level, not at the first one, because we want to keep the source block. Uh, well, not the source block, but you know, the la the last one, so it can regrow. And you just push a button. They are all connected with one single wire, uh, so they activate at the same time, and they will basically break this and this block. Plop. There we go. Sometimes they keep lying on this uh, grass, but I think it's not too bad. Usually it's not that much. It's kind of a lot right now, but it, it varies a lot, so you still get a lot of, of uh, reeds back. And, you know, they just regrow. You just push again. You can just, you know, build a house with lots of those and then collect them all in one stream and, yeah, bring them towards your storage room or whatever. So I tried the same with cacti, however this is a bit more complicated because um, the cacti seems to... Uh, it, it doesn't really fall that far, it, it will basically just you know fall down so a lot of cacti will uh, stay on this sand. So I guess what you could do is instead of pushing the cacti just activate a water stream over there that will push them towards you. Um, First I tried only to cut off at this position here, at the middle one, but then usually the cacti will fall down on the lowest one and, you know, destroy itself. So I just tried it with the bottom one, but as you can see, lots of them will just keep uh, lying on the sand here, and you don't really get a lot out of it. And you also have to replant them every time. So yeah, I don't have really, I haven't found a good example or a good solution for this one yet. So if you have any ideas, just let me know. Um, the other thing is a weird blank wall. We kind of need to get up there. And it happens to have a button here. And if we click it, a staircase. So we can just you know, run, off, uh, run up and it will also go in after a while again. So you have to be a bit fast, otherwise it would just fall down. So that's pretty cool if you if you want to build a house up, you know, you know, somewhere on the mountain or something, and you don't want monsters to climb up or whatever. Uh, that's a pretty nice way. The next thing we now can stack uh, fences without, you know, little tricks without putting blocks underneath and then start from the top to the bottom. Uh, you still can't place them on the side. So for this kind of fence, you still have to place box uh, below. But we can also put st other stuff on fences now, like torches. So this looks actually pretty cool. You put torches on those little fences here, those little poles. So that's a pretty nice thing to have, I think. Um, another thing that got added is uh, or are shears. Do I have one? Nope. So that's great one. All you need to do, two iron bars, uh, diagonal gives you a shear. So just throw something out. Oh, I actually had one. Never mind. So shears can be used to, well, shear sheep because sheep won't give you wool anymore if you punch them. Let's see, do we have a sheep? Yeah, yeah a lot of sheep. Let's go try it on sheep first. So if I left click them, I would still punch them, but you can see they don't drop their wool anymore. So you actually have to right click on a sheep. Uh, to get their wool. However, they still die. Uh, they still drop at least one if they die. 
as you can see. So I think that's actually different. I don't think they dropped uh, wool before if they got damaged and died. Because I guess now you can actually build traps out of uh, with cheeps if you just you know let them fall into a trap into a lava blade or whatever. I guess they would still drop one wool, so maybe you can farm something with that. Uh, but shears usually give you more. The second use for shear are leaves. So you can actually remove leaves now. Uh, for leaves you have to left click, so uh, don't get confused with that. You left click and you will see how fast it is. If I just click, you see, you can really destroy them really quick. But that's a good way to get rid of leaves or whatever. Plus they actually drop a leaf block now. So you can pick them up and uh, place them to make to make uh, hatches or something. Now the thing is, let me light up this here a bit. Um, if you just place them on you know normal blocks or grass or whatever, they will actually start to uh, decay again. As you can see, this one just appeared. This one is one. So you actually have to place them on a wooden lock, not a plank or something. Oops just a normal lock and then they will stay. I believe you can also stack different kind of uh, leaves together. Yep. So that should work too. And I think that's almost it. There's one last thing I want to show you over here for the final bang. TNT! So if you punch TNT now, no worries. It won't get triggered anymore, it will get destroyed. If you want to trigger TNT, you now need redstone. So just hook redstone up to a TNT with a lever and yay! Fireworks! There we go, that's all I have for now. Thanks for watching, I hope it was, use it was useful and uh, see you next time!